Hello viewers and welcome to Triumph Women Beating the Odds. My name is Akelo Sharon Nagenjoa. So in today's world, the intersection of compassion and action is crucial, especially when it comes to addressing the needs of vulnerable populations. Now, Agasha Sara stands as a testament to this intersection through her co-founding the Hazel and Amara Child Support Center. And this is her story this week. Sarah, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. Nice to see you. Nice to see so, you too. Hazel, um, is it Haza, Amara and Hazel? Yes. So, who is Amara? Who is Hazel? All right. Hazel is my daughter. Amara is my daughter and Hazel is a, my founder's daughter. Ah. Yes. So you, you came together to start up a foundation? Yes. We, um, Hazel and Amara, they were both uh, same age. Uh, born in 2019 mm. uh, and uh, me and the mother of Hazel we were friends previously mm. before our child got sick okay yes yeah, so in 2020 uh, my daughter Amara became sick with uh, so many infections the fevers we could go in hospital on and off mm. we go test for everything they say it's infection it's mm. malaria we get treatment but we don't get any better mm. And um, um, and Hazel also got the same issue. She got a, a, an extension in the stomach. Mm. When the mother was bathing her, she felt something on that berry. Yeah. yeah, so we had to keep going in and out of hospitals to look for what the problem was. So at, uh, in around the COVID period, when we got that break, breakdown, mm. we had to continue seeking for medical attention. Uh, we, Amara was admitted in hospital for one week and she, her stomach kept extending. It kept, kept bulging? Yeah, it kept, mm. it kept bulging. It was growing big and they were saying it's malaria, she's going to get better, it was infection. We treated and nothing was getting fine. Mm. Yeah, she was not getting any better. And um, her blood kept reducing. It kept reducing to the extent that we reached a time and they had to add more blood in her body. Wow. But we were not seeing any, mm. the cause of that. Though that when we, we did a scan, they saw a tumor. Mm. They didn't think it was a cancerous tumor. Yes. Yeah, we kept treating the tumor. They said it's malaria. The liver was enlarging, but nothing was, <laughs> was coming out of the treatment. Yes. Until I asked one doctor friend, I sent her picture of the scan. He works with Mulago. He told me this is an emergency. Please bring your daughter to Mulago Hospital. Mm. Yeah, so it's from that time that I had to move to Mulago with Amara and start afresh, mm. the, the treatment afresh. Yeah. Okay. So from Mulago, I had I got a call from my sister. She told me, Sarah, you know what? Rona's daughter is also sick, mm. and they are telling her the same things they are mm. telling you. Remember, our daughters uh, have an age difference of two months. Yes. Mine was born in May. Mm. Uh, Rona's daughter is born in uh, March. Mm. So we have an age difference. Rona is your friend. Yes, yeah, is mm. my friend, the co-founder. So we found ourselves in the same situation at the same period. And you were friends. And we are that. friends, yes. What a coincidence. Yeah, it was I, it, it was quite sad, mm. but it was good that we were in it together. Yes. Yeah, because this You're needed... You were supporting each other. Yeah, mm. it needed someone to move with. Mm. Yes, so the time she told me, we went through it together. We could make calls, we talk to each other. We share what's happening in, on her side and on her side. Because mm. mine basically, I, I settled in Mulago, yes. Mulago Hospital. And for her, she moved to Aga Khan Hospital mm. in Nairobi. Yes. It was COVID time, so movements were really harsh. Mm. But we really managed to settle in Mulago and got her treatment. Um, to go back, what I realized, most people in Uganda, even the medical doctors, even mm. the nurses, they don't know childhood cancer. Yeah. Even they, they can't differentiate it easily from other diseases. Mm. Because my daughter was sick for long, from like January 2020. Yeah. She would get fevers. We go to hospital. They do checkup, but they find infection. They say infection because nothing yes. was adding up. Yeah. We treat infections. We treat, we treat malaria. And I visited most of good hospitals. Mm. Yeah. Good hospitals. 
even when I went to the last good hospital, because it's very good, yes. the, the good pediatricians were telling me it's malaria, it's going to get better. Mm. The, the trusted pediatricians. Yes. yes, until we did many scans. And I, I forwarded one to a friend who, who works with Mulago and he had to identify it. Mm. So I found that as a weakness mm. that we have in this country. So in that period, I had already known that this is cancerous tumor. Yes. So I was praying. I was praying that let it not be. Because mm. they, they told me there is a possibility of it being cancerous and a possibility of it not being cancerous, cancerous tumor. Yes. So I prayed, I prayed, let it not be. Mm. But unfortunately, when we went for the, the, the results, the doctor gave us uh, bad news. He told us this is a neuroblastoma, it's mm. a cancerous tumor. So we have to go through a series of chemotherapy, surgery and radiotherapy and, and, and more treatments to mm -hmm. close this. And these are risk, risk diseases. Yes. So you, the possibility of the child surviving and not surviving, they are very high. Mm. Uh, and I thank God that my husband was so supportive because mm. all the time we were moving together. Mm. So we went through it together, but it was so challenging. Our family was not the same. Mm. Yes, we were supposed to take uh, first four cycles of chemotherapy. Mm. Then after that, we do a surgery. Then uh, uh, we take other two cycles mm. of, of chemotherapy after the surgery. Mm. But because our tumor was located in a bad place, our tumor was cross, crossing around from here to here mm. and the iota was going through it. Mm. So we couldn't do only uh, only four, four, four. You know, when a child is sick, you even learn all scientific terms. Yes, I really Googled. <laughs> I, 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 I really Googled I can and see, you know, yes. I, I had to understand yes. everything. Mm. How, why, what yes. happens next, yes. Mm. So it was really hard. Um, we did the first four cycles. Because the doctors had promised us that sometimes mm. children, when you do chemotherapy, the tumor shrinks. Mm. It may disappear. So our prayer now shifted to let this tumor shrink mm. in these four, the first cycles. So we did the first four cycles, but tumor was not getting any better. Mm. It was reducing by a small radius. A margin, yeah. A small margin. So it was really not making a, a big change. Mm. So we had to continue because even that reduction that was there, the surgery couldn't happen. Mm. They wanted a big margin to, to reduce so yes. that they can go for surgery. So they had to add us more, more, more chemotherapy until it, sh it shrinks the more. Mm. Yes. So after taking more, actually, we took overdose of chemotherapy. Huh? Af uh, yes. After Why did you take an overdose? Because they are trying to make it shrink. Ah, so you, you did a bit too much. Too much, yes. yes. Did, and I, I, yeah, and you did. were hoping that it would shrink yeah. without surgery. Not not without surgery. Mm. It will reduce to a, a good margin whereby it can be removed safely. Yes, yeah, safely. Okay. Without well. yeah, without hurting wow, so other Sarah, parts of the body. Great. You know, um, as a mother, it is one of the most painful things as a mother is having a child that has an illness, a chronic disease. It, it actually feels like you want to get that disease, put it in you, so that you're the one that suffers. But guess what? You have to stay strong as a mother and support your child and have the best support system around you so that we, you can help that child uh, recover and survive whatever illness they're going through. We will be right back after this break. Welcome back from that short break. Today we are talking about uh, motherhood and, and child illness. Um, just from Sarah's story today, we know that there is child cancer and that is what uh, she's going through, what, that's what her child has, has gone through. And she's trying to break it down for us to understand how we can overcome in case there are people out there who are going through the same thing and because they have a foundation amara and hazel foundation that supports such children so sarah as we proceed with your story yeah yes as i proceed mm -hmm. uh i myself and i'm an accountant mm -hmm. i can go back then i yes we, yeah i'm an accountant and uh, by the time when my child was diagnosed we were in a, a covid period, lo yeah, yes. lockdown 
So that was another chance that we got. Mm. Yes. So as an accountant, I had to, though for me, I was working during that period. Yes. Because yes, we work in telecom, so we had to keep working. Mm. But I was lucky that my bosses were good. Yes. They understood my period and gave me grace period. Mm. So when we, we started that treatment, I had uh, reached a, a time when we we had done all the 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 cycles yeah. and the tumor is not getting any better. Mm. So now we started uh, preparing for surgery. We in Mulago they told us that if they had open Amara, they are going to they are going to remove only 60% of the tumor. Mm. So in my heart I was asking myself, why should I why should you even open her? Yeah. If if you're if only you're going to remove, remove 60% of the tumor. It, it better stays than opening a remove 60%. Mm, and then yes. she remains with the 40%. Yeah, and, and then remain, yes, uh, yeah. then suffer with it. So we kept, you know, back and forth, back and forth, because it was in really a bad, mm -hmm. a bad place, but, mm. whereby the iota was going through it, and by any, any mistake, it would go bad. Yeah. So that's why they were giving us that option, because mm. we are going to just remove around, around, mm. and leave the tumor around the iota. The ones that are in a uh, risky area. Yes, mm -hmm. they, they, they were going to let it be like that. So we kept praying. That was around uh, now August, September. We are not getting any surgery. October, November. Then we kept consulting, consulting. Uh, we had to continue praying for, for the best option because 60% mm. was not the best. Yes. It was not the best for opening someone. So uh, the year ended 2020, we are still in COVID. Then we went, we go to 2021. Uh, in January 2021, the good thing the doctors told us that uh, in Mbara Hospital, mm. the, the Mbara University Hospital, the, there is going to be a surgical camp mm. whereby there are many surgeons that can help you people. Yeah. So we were sent to Mbara Hospital and um, it took us uh, all that long mm. to, to get the, you know, the treatment. And you know that the time when you're not treating cancer, it keeps growing. When you stop, it keeps growing. So from the time we started treatment to the time we got our surgery, mm. it was quite a long period for us to, to go into surgery. So that time we were so disturbed, we were so depressed, we were so, a lot was happening in our lives. Mm. So we went to Mbara Hospital um, and they opened the girl and they managed to remove 90% uh, of the tumor. After the 90%, now the 10 is left. We had to come back to Mulago. Then we started the uh, um, radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we did radiotherapy and other final chemotherapies that they give at the end. Then we closed that treatment in 2021. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2021. So there we settled a bit. Now we start thinking about the others who are in the hospital. Because mm. for the time I, I, I went to the hospital, it was really full of negative vibes from the parents yeah. who have children who are sick. Mm. They were telling us, you know, you've brought your daughter when she's looking good. Mm. She has hair by the time you leave this place. Mm. You yourself would have lost weight. Your child would have lost weight. Mm. She's going to go through a lot of things. So yes. the, the talk was really negative. negative, yes. And that negative energy, it affected me personally because mm. I really lost weight. I couldn't eat. Mm. I couldn't even sleep properly. Mm. So that's how we started Hazel and Amara Child Support Center to address the needs that mm. we, we found. Because in Uganda, na the one, number one challenge, there is that uh, yes. stigma mm. to people with cancer, yeah. most especially when it, be, it comes to children, mm. it's rare for a child to have cancer. Mm. So people think it's uh, either witchcraft, yes. those things. Yes, they think it's witchcraft, mm. or there is nothing that you did in your life mm. that is affecting your child. Or oh, you were so promiscuous. Yes, and yes. So, <laughs> so people are really judging you. Yeah. And some people don't even understand it. I remember one time mm. I took my old daughter in hospital. She was sick. Then I went with Amara. Yeah. But reaching there, the doctor looked at my uh, my daughter. My daughter's hair had fallen off. Yeah. They were like small hairs. One, which, one, one. Yeah, yeah, which were looking ugly. And the doctor asked, asked me, 
what are you feeding your daughter? Mm. I told her I feed her no more food. Mm. Then she started lecturing me how I'm not feeding my daughter properly, how uh, how I should give her a lot of mm. proteins. Like she, he didn't first like understand. Like the child had kwasha cold. Yes, yes. He didn't first understand why am I even saying all this? Why wh what's wrong with this child? Did he not correct her? I looked at her and she was a lady. I looked at her and I was like, what are you even saying? Mm. I was breaking down. Mm. Yeah, so I, I, I that, that, that was one challenge and I thought we Please need to... Please tell me you corrected her. I, I, I did. Okay. I did. What was her reaction? I did. She didn't say anything. She didn't I think say she, I'm sorry. She, 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 didn't she was shocked. She said I'm sorry, but she was also shocked. I mm. think she also learned something. Yes. Yeah, we, we don't need to take things for granted. Mm. When you look at someone, first understand why. Don't create an assumption. Yeah. Assumption, you're not feeding your daughter mm. well. I was feeding that daughter well, though that daughter was sick. Yes. So we need to create that awareness and remove all those stigmas of someone looking at your child when, while treat, on treatment and mm. start blaming you. Yes. Yes. Also, when my daughter was sick, she was still breastfeeding because she was one year old mm. and Hazel was also one year old. Then one doctor said, why is it that this baby is breastfeeding and she, he, she's lo losing blood, yes. which should not be happening? Then he concluded that maybe the mother's breast milk is, is having a problem. A problem. Mm. Yes, and me, I've been in hospital for long. I'm suffering. That is before they diagnosed mm. us. So the, the words that doctors were saying themselves were not, they were not good to my ears. Mm. Yes. They're not encouraging. They are, yes, they're not giving mm. me strength. I'm like, why is it that my breast milk now is not... So doctors, you... Yes, sir, some people... Change language. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, some doctors really... Mm. We need to be aware of some yes. things. And, you know, mm. we look for a way of communicating things. Actually, not only doctors. Yeah. Even while you're passing, someone is looking at your child and like, what's mm. wrong with your child? Just hair? uttering statements. So, eh, wow. Your, your, your mm. daughter's hair looks so bad. Like everyone is concluding. Mm. So it was really sad that... We decided to address those challenges by creating awareness among uh, Ugandans, not only Ugandans, the whole world, we need to be aware, most mm. especially in Africa. We need to be aware because uh, other parents we met were mm. sharing their stories. And wh I remember one, uh, one father shared how he went through the treatment yes. until the, uh, and the sickness, until the diagnosis. Mm. She went to the first witch doctor, got a different story, mm. went to another one. Another witch doctor. Yes. And in meantime, he's selling land, mm. he's selling cows, he's selling whatever he has. Cause to, those to the, give the witch doctor. Yes, money. you know they are expensive. Mm. So he was selling whatever he had mm. to, you know, to get money and go to the witch doctors and get all those stories. Because they're not aware. Yeah, they are not aware of what is happening. Because the daughter's stomach was also, a, you know, it was very, mm. actually it was very big. And every time they, he could reach there, they tell him something and he relates with it. So how are you supporting them? Now? So now we create, we create awareness mm. to people that childhood cancer is there. These are the signs. Mm. If you see your, your child is like this, you go to this hospital, mm. maybe do some checkups. And you know, you get to know what is really affecting your child. Mm. Yeah, so, so that we stop thinking that childhood cancer is not there. It's mm. there. Yeah, it's real. So we have to be aware of it. So you, you have a website, Amara and Hazel? Yes, so we have a website. Mm. We have um, social media pages. Yeah. So you can really follow us. You can contact us mm. in case you have any query mm. about, about childhood cancer. Uh, we normally work with cancer institutes. Yes. Yeah, we normally work around cancer institutes because mm. uh, ca cancer is treated in a few hospitals. Yes. Yeah, there are like three. That is... Uh, Cancer Institute, that is Mbara University, mm. and I think Lacho Hospital. Mm. So it's not in every area, in every hospital that you can get treatments. Mm. Yeah, so we've really tried to create awareness wow. among Ugandans. So uh, child cancer is not a, a cause for uh, a witchcraft alarm. Is yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> I would say it's an illness and mm. They need treatment. Children need treatment. Just like every other person is born with different diseases, it is just normal. So, and then I, I implore the world that please let's stop discrimination. Let's just stop. 
the world is such a beautiful place and there's so much that happens in the world and in this world that is so challenging we need a support system just one statement one careless statement can ruin someone's day one careless statement can send someone straight to depression mm -hmm. so let's kill let's send away mental illnesses by uttering the right statements by having empathy in the way that we communicate so let's take this to our socials at girl from Moyam and at triumph women ug until next time same time next saturday